Hi there. In this video, we're going to see how we can make your retool table behave and feel like an Excel spreadsheet. That means make it fast and that edits happen automatically in the same instant that you take them um, without some of the things that are typical of retool. So without further ado, let's just take dive. OK, for this video, I will use a, the sample users information that is already given by default in Retools database, which contains a list of users, email, sign up date, and role. OK, so the concept of this is that we will make edits directly to the data that is underlying the table without having to wait for a query that posts the changes and comes back. We will still do that, but we won't have to wait for that. So let's do that. So first of all, I will take the information from a simple user's data. I will just copy it and I will go to this variable that's called table data and I will paste it here. So if I see view state here, I'm just going to move this below. You'll see that again, view state. Now this variable contains the same information. So I'm going to change the data source for my table to table data. And then I will just use ID as well. So nothing has changed in the front end of my table, but the data source that's using is a variable that I can change and edit using the set in and set value uh, for variables that Rachel provides. Okay, so let's start with the first thing that will be editing the table. So what I will do is an event handler that whenever the, the cell changes, I will run a script. And I have that script prepared so that I have you don't have to wait for me until I write it. So what will this do is let's see if I can open this. I'm finding the, the index. What is the key? So whenever you change, make a player change to a cell, you will have this change it array. So basically we're we are finding the key, we're removing the ID key so that we will just remain with the key, whether that's email or name. And then we will get the value. So the key and the value, we will have now the option to set an array. Now, after that, we will run the update user query. And if it's successful, then we will update the variable with here I am indicating which index, which key, and the value. If I view the state in here and I open here the first one, if I change from Peter Rubina to Peter Smith, you can see this has now changed to Peter Smith. And my query update user has run. So if I view the state, you can see that it has made, applied a bulk update. Basically, what this update user is doing is simply taking the change set array, which in this case is Peter Smith ID 1. Now, what I can do here is after this runs, we will put a control component, table one, clear change set, and we'll just give it at the bounds so that there's no there's no race condition between the set value and running this query. I'm going to reset the state of the table. Oh, sorry, reset state. So it's changing. Oh, it didn't actually change the change it array. Let's just refresh this really quickly. Let's see if that now works. If I well, that now has changed because I'm using this, which actually I should have used. Um, this was just for demonstration purposes. But what I can do here is just take my sample users data. That's it. OK, so if I click here and put uh, Verity, it changes, it runs the query, and it removes the change set array. OK, we are now updating the variable, pushing the update user and removing the change set array. Something that we can do to remove that so that the user doesn't see that is this cell edit indicator, which is that little arrow. We can just pass this to zero. So we won't see that. The user won't see that. So if I put this here and this will be surname, you don't see that anymore. So if actually I remove this notification on success, now we can just change to whatever, oops, sorry for the typo. And the changes is happening in the database. It changes automatically here and the user doesn't have to wait. 
the same thing I can go here to the date. It will update the date. It will update the database. And there's no clue for the user that something is loading in the back end. All right. OK, now let's delete a row. So we will add a row action, which will be delete. And then we will put trash here. And then we'll add a script. And then we will just add this, which basically what it does is it takes the table data and its current status, 45 items, and then it will remove from that the selected row. We will run the delete trigger, which is basically just taking the selected row ID and delete it, is delete a record. And on success, it will set the value to the table. I'm just doing it on success to make sure that the actual action happens in the backend before the arrays is updated. Otherwise, we can show an error and the user will know that that action didn't actually happen. So let's see uh, if we go here. So we have given some mana. And if we click here, user delete it and it removes it from the table. If I click again, so let's see, we have burn, it's index one, it removes burn and it removes from the table. So that's a way also to delete, and it feels like an Excel. Well, Excel, you wouldn't do it actually, but it feels more fast and it's more automatic. You could do the same thing for adding new rows, although that's a little bit more complicated. But this is a way of actually make your table edits and deletes move faster and not having to wait for the query to update the database and then fetch the database and get a new update. So I hope you like this. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment in the comment box. Do subscribe if you haven't so. And for the people who have been waiting for a video for long, sorry, it took me a while, but here it is. I hope you like it. Cheers.